I hope you've all received a notice sheet because there were a lot of notices on them and I'm not intending to go through them by. If you haven't received a notice sheet, please contact the office and they'll get one to you. The most important thing to tell you is that next weekend is our harvest weekend and there'll be a harvest service here in church and we want food given for local charities. We're not asking for fresh produce, but do make sure if you, <coughs> with the um, dry stuff, that it actually has a, quite a good long best before date. That's very important. And there'll be a drive through. Is it here in the hall? So on Saturday between 11 and 2, you can bring produce, well, dried goods, to the parish centre and they'll be taken out of your boots and you can drive off again. That's between 11 and 2 on um, Saturday. This Sunday, this, uh, today rather at 4 o'clock, there is Explore, I assume in church. Is it here in church? Where's... Is it here in church? Yes, thank you. And um, I can't see her. Jill wants to give out a notice. Jill, would you like to come and... ...that it's Pam Land's Wake Memorial tomorrow... If anybody's intending to attend and hasn't signed up to help with anything, we are still looking for a couple of people that might be able to help with uh, supplying sandwiches, which obviously have to be fresh on the day. The idea was that we would have like an afternoon tea theme to it. So we wanted everything to be prepared beforehand so that we could just put it out. So we just need a couple of people to help put things out and sort things out. If you're going to be around and could be available, if you could let myself or Rose know, that would be much appreciated. Thank you. So that's at 2.30 on Monday. And if my memory serves me right, on Thursday, and I'm sorry, I don't know the time, but it's on the notice sheet, will be Rose, Rosemary... Thomas's funeral. Some of you might remember Rosemary Thomas. No, sorry, Sheila started. I can't hear you, Sheila. Okay, it was last week. Sorry, I got myself confused. Sorry about that. Right, I'm, I read the. I've got some bands of marriage to publish. I published the bands of marriage between Joshua John Nickling and Emily Natasha Morgan, both of all saints with St. Catherine's Iton, with a qualifying connection with St. John the Baptist Withington. If any of you know cause or just impediment why these two persons should not be joined together in holy matrimony, you are to declare it. This is for the first time of asking. So let's just pray for Joshua and Emily. Father, we lift Joshua and Emily to, to you, Lord, as they prepare for their wedding, Lord, may you be in the centre of that wedding and may they know you, Lord, in their lives as they come together to get married. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Right. So as we just come to worship, let's say that first prayer together. As we calm down and sort of think about why we've come here. We say together... Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. And so we're going to sing My Lighthouse.
wrestling in my doubts, in my failures, you will walk out. Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. Oh, you are the peace in my troubled sea. In the silence, you won't let go. Your truth will hold Your great love will lead me through You are the peace in my troubled sea You are the peace in my troubled sea My lighthouse, my lighthouse Shining in the darkness I will follow you please. So, particularly in the young people, if I could have their help, please. I've got a very heavy basket bag here. Aren't any of you going to come and help me? Come on, Harriet. Come on, up you get. Thomas, aren't you going to come and help me? No? Oh, I'm very sad about that. Aren't you going to come and help? Thank you very much. Right. Can't you come and help me? I need you very desperately. Well, could I have a couple of adults then, please? Thank you, Barbara. Um, Jill, would you come, please? Right. Right. Jill, I want you to be on this side by your own, by yourself, okay? I'll explain. Right. You go over that side. You all go over that side. Right, over that side. Right. Now... I want you, it's a competition. You people and Jill, you've got to empty this bag and I want to see which side's going to win. So, okay, go. No, 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 taking the things out. <laughs> and bring them over to your side. Take them over to your side. Take them over to your side. Right, 
She's done it, they've done it, they've done it, they've done it. Right. <laughs> right. Who had the easiest job? You did, didn't you? Because there were a lot of you, and there was Jill on her own. Yes? And it's about working together, and Nick's going to be talking to about working together. I mean, Jill was a very good one working on... Jill, it was an interesting, working on your own, you, do, you, have to, to, you have to fight more, don't you? It's more difficult, so you're actually not so gentle about it. Not being rude about you. <laughs> so it's about working together. So let's work together and put it all back in the bag, please. So we've got to put them in the bag gently. That's right, pack it, help Harriet. So we're going to go back in. So thank you for your help. Thank you for showing us about working together. It goes behind the... Thank you. Thank you very much. And Jill's helping me by carrying it back. So... When you're tempted to do things on your own, and maybe there's somebody else there, maybe you could ask them to help you, because often people like to be able to help. So before the, ch before the children go to their groups, let's say the church family prayer together. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for our church family. Please watch over us now in our different groups. Teach us to know you more clearly love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day, for Jesus' sake. Amen. So if the children like to go to the, their groups, And as we come to our confession, perhaps we need to think about the times and perhaps we've not actually helped other people when we've perhaps seen other people struggling. One of the, I think, wonderful things that came out of last year in the pandemic was the way that so many people offered to help other people. There was a lot of help around. And my, my prayer is actually that doesn't go because we're now sort of back to normal. So let's just think about time. So we always offer to help when we should have done, when we could have done. So we say together, Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been, help us to amend what we are, and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. May the God of love and power Forgive us and save us from our sins. Heal and strengthen us by, us by his spirit and raise us to new, to, to new life in Christ. Amen. And a colic for this 16th Sunday after Trinity. Lord of creation, whose glory is around us and within us, open our eyes to your wonders that we may serve you with reverence and know your peace at our lives end. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And Bob is now going to bring us our first reading. Our first reading comes from the book of Nehemiah, chapter 3, and I'm reading from verse 1. Eliashib, the high priest, and his fellow priests 
went to work and rebuilt the sheep gate. They dedicated it and set its doors in place, building as far as the Tower of the Hundred, which they dedicated, and as far as the Tower of Hananel. The men of Jericho built the adjoining section, and Zakor, son of Imri, built next to them. The fish gate was re rebuilt by the sons of Hanessa. They laid its beams and put its doors and bolts and bars in place. Meresmeth, son of Uriah, the son of Hakos, repaired the next section. Next to him, Mishalem, son of Berechiah, the son of Meshaizabal, made repairs, and next to him, Zadok, son of Barna, also made repairs. The next section was repaired by the men of Tekoa, but their, neighbor, neighbor, their nobles would not put their shoulders to the work under their supervisors. The Jishana gate was repaired by Joida, son of Passa, and Meshulam, son of Besoida. They laid its beams and put its doors with their bolts and bars in place. Next to them, repairs were made by the men from Gibeon and Mizpah. Melatiah of Gibeon and Jadon of Meronoth, places under the authority of the governor of Trans-Euphrates. Uziel, son of Harahiah, one of the goldsmiths, repaired the next section, and Hananiah, one of the perfume makers, made repairs next to that. They restored Jerusalem as far as the broad wall. Rephiah, son of Hur, ruled, ruler of half of the district of Jerusalem, repaired the next section. Adjoining this, Jediah, son of Harumph, made repairs opposite his house, and Hattush, son of Hashbeniah, made repairs next to him. Mal Malkijah, son of Harim, and Hashub, son of Pathmoab, repaired another section, and the Tower of the Ovens. Shalom, son of Halash, ruler of a half district of Jerusalem, repaired the next section, with the help of his daughters. The valley gate was repaired by Hanun and the residents of Zenoa. They rebuilt it and put its doors with their bolts and bars in place. They also repaired a thousand cubits of the wall as far as the dung gate. The dung gate was repaired by Malkaija, son of Rechab, ruler of the district of Beth Hakarem. He rebuilt it and put its doors and their bolts and bars in place. The fountain gate was repaired by Shalon, son of Kozhoseth, ruler of the district of Mizpah. He rebuilt it, roofing it over and putting its doors and bolts and bars in place. He also repaired the wall of the pool of Siloam by the king's garden, as far as the steps going down from the city of David. Beyond him, Nehemiah, son of Azbuk, ruler of the half-district of Bessor, made repairs up to a point opposite the tombs of David, as far as the artificial pool and the house of the heroes. This is the word of the Lord. And Gabriel now brings us the gospel reading. Thank you. If you are able, please stand for the Gospel reading. Today's reading will be taken from Luke 10, uh, chapters 1 to 12. After this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them two by two ahead of him to every town and place where he was about to go. He told them, the harvest is plentiful but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Go, I am sending you out like lambs among wolves. Do not take a purse or bag or sandals, and do not greet anyone on the road. When you enter a house, first say, peace to this house. If the head of the house loves peace, your peace will rest on that house. If not, it will return to you. Stay there, eating and drinking, whatever they give you, for workers deserve their wages. Do not move around from house to house. 
When you enter a town and are welcomed, eat what is set before you. Heal those there who are ill and tell them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. But when you enter a town and are not welcomed, go into its streets and say, even the dust of your town we wipe from our feet as a warning to you. Yet be sure of this, the kingdom of God has come near. I tell you, it will be more bearable on that day for Sodom than for that town. This is the word of the Lord. Oh, please be seated. Well, let's pray real quick. Um, yeah, Lord, just thank you for calling us together this morning. Uh, and thank you for your word. Lord, we just ask that you'll open our ears to hear what you want to say to us this morning. And will you soften our hearts that we can be transformed and formed together by your word. Amen. Well, last week, Tim kicked off this new sermon series all about rebuilding. Because it feels like we're finally coming out of the period of walk down. And uh, we're now living in uh, what people have been predicting throughout the pandemic as the new normal. Because as soon as lockdown began, it was assumed that we were going to come out of this as changed people. It's as if somehow we knew that once this pandemic was over, not that it is, but that the world was going to be different. And we were going to have to learn how to live our lives differently. And so the early stages of this new normal, I think kind of what we're in at the moment, um, it gives us an opportunity to cut loose of some of the things that maybe we didn't care for, maybe weren't all that helpful in the pre-pandemic life, and carry forward what we have learned to appreciate from being in lockdown. Because I, for one, and Margaret hit on this too, I'm really thankful for so many good things that emerged during most of what we call lockdown. But remember, it's not just lockdown. It was a pandemic. I mean, there's so much heartache and grief that so many have felt, and we need to recognize and and pray for this. Like all saints, even, have suffered a significant blow. Not necessarily because of the virus, but this has been an unusually difficult past few months for several members of our community. So maybe before we start to look ahead, we should take some time to just stop and pray and, and reach out to those we know who are suffering around us. So now as we think about that Nehemiah reading, and thank you Barbie for reading that. That's like a, a nightmare reading for anyone. And who knew she spoke Hebrew perfectly? <laughs> um, but as we think about that reading... So you got to think, Israel, they would have been doing a lot of reflection as they were rebuilding for the future. Because these are people that, um, of Israel who had grown up living as exiles. And they've finally been allowed to return home to the home of their parents and their grandparents. But the land that they were returning to was just a shell of what their parents and grandparents lived in. Because Jerusalem had been destroyed. The temple was destroyed. Their parents' homes were destroyed. And the land was occupied by foreign nations. So now that Israel was allowed to return, they begin the whole rebuilding process by restoring the wall that surrounds the city. And some of these names that we heard, um, we, they were, read, were relatives to the people who had worked on that wall before. So a lot of those names were in the middle, the son of, the son of. And yeah. So working on this wall would have given these people not just a sense of belonging, but a sense of responsibility and ownership of that place. Because they were building and restoring the wall that their ancestors had worked on. They were touching and moving the same rocks that their ancestors had touched. But this project would have also created a stronger sense of community amongst themselves. Because this was a massive undertaking. And it had to be done quickly. Because Jerusalem was very vulnerable at this moment. Because without walls, they could have been overtaken at any point. So we have all these names, plus many more, working together to build a wall that would secure the city. 
And they built that wall in 52 days. And it was a huge wall, which is just a phenomenal achievement. I mean, I'm just thinking, I've been waiting for over five months to have someone come and repair our fence at our house. Like, like times have changed, I guess. <laughs> but these people who, and they weren't necessarily skilled at building walls. This wasn't their expertise. They were able to come together to pull off an amazing achievement, which allowed them to rebuild the rest of the city and the temple. Now if we jump forward as we think about our New Testament reading. We see that Jesus chose and had many followers that he would send out together on mission to proclaim the kingdom of God is near. And before Jesus got to that point, he inaugurated his own ministry by reading a passage from Isaiah, which says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. And this was the point where Jesus' ministry began. Because to Jesus, the coming of the kingdom of God means the elevation of the poor. The poor will be lifted up and empowered, and the structures that oppress the poor and support the wealthy will be torn down. That day is coming. In fact, it's already come. And so much of Jesus' ministry was to care for the poor, to challenge others to care for the poor, and he taught us to put our needs of the poor above our own. Now the theme of this morning is, is about the importance of working together as we move forward. Um, and I'm really thankful for our partnerships with organizations like uh, CAP, Christians Against Poverty, who are working to just eradicate poverty. Now this is a very long-term goal, and it's a huge assignment, and it's going to take time. But we work with CAP in the ways in which uh, they are serving the poor. But there are a lot of people out there who are in desperate need now. And we shouldn't ever lose sight of working with those who are seeking to eradicate poverty. But we also need to be aware of those who are in need around us today. And there are a lot of people in need. And we as a church, we couldn't cope with it. Even if we tried our best, we couldn't do it. It's a huge task. But we can help many uh, meet the needs of many when we work together with like-minded organizations. So I just mentioned CAP. And a few weeks ago I talked about uh, working with Three Views Community Fridge. I mean, these are great organizations who are seeking to serve the poor. And today I'd like to talk about another group that we work with. And and they work really hard at ensuring that a lot of families and individuals from all all across Telford can have access to food. And and they do more than that. But actually, well, she's playing with my daughter at the moment, but I think I'm not going to say a whole lot. This is about Telford crisis support. um, Because I'd just like to invite Erin. She's a supervisor there. And uh, I think she would do a much better job than I ever could explaining exactly what Telford Crisis Support does and how we could better work alongside them and support them. So Aaron, which if you don't mind, I'll get you a microphone. I know Braley's just irresistible though, isn't she? (laughs) Are you you all right with this? And do you need a table? I can set that on a... I can you just grab that little table there? Okay. So, um, can everybody hear me okay? That's great. So, this is actually the first time in 18 months I've got to do this. Um, so, I'm a little bit nervous, and I normally do this in um, lots of schools. So, around this time, I go out, I do. Um, assemblies in school, talk to them about the the role we have within the community, and then I normally go back a couple of weeks later and and collect all the harvest donations. Apart from running the food bank, we also have a school uniform project. We have a baby bank, so that can involve things like the Moses baskets, nappies, anything a a parent would need in, in need of a crisis. We are starting the winter coat scheme soon. That one's very lucky. We're funded by the council for that. But we're mostly known for the food bank. What I've got in here is a um, pretty much standard three-day parcel. 
and the items that are often donated at harvest and, and this is how we use them. So we always start, I've got to find it all now. <laughs> oh, cereal and milk are two of the things that we're always running short on. And we always try and make sure that there are beans, soup and spaghetti. Now these are lovely, but actually they go much better if we've got some bread. And um, we're very fortunate that Sainsbury's donate twice weekly to us. So that means that beans is, is beans on toast. I'm kind of rehashing what I'm going to be saying next week in assembly. So if it's a little bit, <laughs> I don't say dumbing down, but I'm just trying to get my words together. Our difficulty is always trying to provide the evening meals. And what we tend to go for, instant mashed potato or tin potatoes. The instant mash is actually really good if you've got a slightly larger family or actually if you've only got a kettle to cook. Because actually a tin of corned beef, which can be eaten cold, with some hot mash actually then creates a meal for somebody who's in a hotel. But here, we've paired it with some stewed steak. We've got our sweet corn and our vegetables. And I think, here we go, things like chili. No, find it. Chili and curry. Things like these, you know, the mixed beans and the pulses. These will actually pad out and, and bulk out a meal. Again, particularly useful if we've got a family. Our aim is always to be able to create three evening meals. So things like pasta and pasta sauce are great, but our aim is what do we put with those to then make it a meal? And that quite often it is the, the problem we face. And I think, oh, we always have some little mug shots. We are seeing an increasing number of people who are in work. So to be able to provide these, so at least they've got something then to eat while they're at work, because they may not be able to stop and have beans on toast. And again, same with the cup of soups. You can use them while you're at work, or actually, if you've only got a kettle, if you're in a hotel. And I always... Oh. I think that's leaking. Rice. There we go. And we believe it doesn't matter how bad the situation is. Everybody is entitled to some nice munches. So we have the biscuits, the chocolate, which you saw earlier, and some crisps. Now, we always say, this is all great. But actually, if you've got no money for food, how do you afford to wash your hands and um, wipe your bum? I normally say that in front of five-year-olds. So you can imagine, yeah, I, that's the reaction I get. And they go, oh, she said mum. But they remember, but they remember that. And that's fine. So we get then lots of loose toilet rolls and bars of soap. But that's fine. They've remembered something I've said because we all know at that age, very short attention span. And things like this, obviously the shower gel, this is one of those three-in-one types. Toiletries are always always a big problem for us. I think they're equally as important as the items like the stew and steak and the chilli and the curry and, and the meatballs. Because we do, we do see a lot of single people, but we are seeing more and more families. Um, more requests for nappies, particularly the larger sizes. Um, it's been a difficult 18 months and we were really, really well supported by everybody in the community, particularly from here with the uh, food drives that were all taking place. Um, and we very rarely get to do a, a thank you like this. So, sorry. Sorry. Um, as I was saying, so it's, it's very rare we get to do a thank you like this where we get to come talk to you all. Um, so thank you for all the help you've given and all the help you'll continue to give. It, it really does mean a lot. Um, and I've just completely waffled for about 10 minutes. Sorry. It's been a long time since I've done this. Um, but these are the kind of things that we need. It, it's the long life milk, the cereal, the main meal items, and obviously toiletries as well.
I said, no, I said, I said I'm done waffling now. <laughs> Sharon. So did everybody get the shopping list? I can leave this if you want. Yeah, that'd be yeah, that'd be helpful. It's not in the way, is it, Margaret? Okay. Yeah, that'd be great. So yeah, so now we have a little bit better idea of exactly what we're looking for when we do the food drive on Saturday. And two, if you can't make it on the from eleven to two on Saturday, just bring it if you're coming here on Sunday, bring it along. We can still pop it in the parish center and uh, they'll come and collect it on Monday. And um, yeah, we've done, well, we, and actually it wasn't up to us. We weren't the ones really organizing and, ho and hosting all these food drives that have been going on. That was also us working with a community group. Oh yeah, I can take my mask off. Ah, I always forget about that. This is my favorite part. I can take it off and I forgot. But that wasn't just like our idea and initiative. It was us working alongside an, a community group. And we had... I think seven, eight food drives. And through all that, we were able to jump a, a lot of food off at Telford Crisis Support. We, uh, it kept Reek and View going, and it helped start up another food bank out of Hadley Learning Community. Um, so uh, the hope and the prayer is that we'll all turn up with items like this. Don't forget the, the loo rolls and just all the toiletries. That stuff gets picked over fast. Um, but we'll be able to drop a big load off to all three again. Um, Thank you again, Aaron. Thank you for everything that you, you and your team have been doing. Um, I think it's a great partnership. And let me just pray for Telford Crisis support, and then that's it for me. So Lord, just thank you for the compassion that you have just raised up over the past several months. Um, people have given a lot, just sacrificially, um, with so much as food and all these toiletries, and, and we've help some families and individuals just keep going. So thank you, Lord, for giving us that uh, ability to, to do this. So Lord, I just pray that you will bless Aaron and the whole team there at Telford Crisis Support. And will you continue to just work through them, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. the music group like to come up, but let us just, while they're assembling, we're going to sing, You Call Me Out Upon the Water. Let's just think and pray about what the Lord is asking us to do in supporting this appeal.
Where feet may fail and fear surrounds me You never failed and you won't start now So I'll call upon your name now going to come and lead us in prayer. Our response this morning will be, when I say, Lord, in your mercy, please respond with, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we bring the people of the world to you remembering that many of the problems we see and hear about in the world are caused by man. So we pray today for all those who have an unhealthy need to take power, to control by force, to latch on to extreme ideals, or to repress others. Let us not forget that they are all made by you, loved by you, and your will is for all people to live in peace. Take away the anger and violence and help them to be given the opportunity to hear about your love for each of them and about your kingdom of love, peace and tolerance. On a larger scale, may your Holy Spirit be in the talks that go on between political leaders 
trying to make peace through discussion and understanding of different viewpoints. And we continue to pray for the innocent people, many of them women and children, who are caught up in violence in many parts of the world. We hear just small snapshots on the news, but you know the whole picture. And so we continue to pray for world peace and harmony. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our PCC meeting tomorrow evening. We pray for a common vision and a prayerful listening to your voice. We pray for discernment to know what you are calling us to do now as we carefully come out of lockdown and what your longer term plans for us might be as we continue to serve our community of Wellington. May the leadership of your church, not just here, but nationwide and worldwide, look to the example of your people in every age who have been called to rebuild after a time of exile. May we be brave in following new ways of reaching out, give ourselves permission to put down former ways and know which of each to do. We pray too for new enthusiasm from your people across the church to get involved and work together for the building up of your kingdom. We pray for our leadership team as they get used to working in a smaller team without a curate, that they will have energy and strength and know how to make the most fruitful use of their time. As we, we also pray for our national leaders after the recent cabinet reshuffle. We pray for those who have lost the responsibility they previously had, that they may continue to feel motivated and valued. And we pray for those who suddenly have to assume responsibility very quickly, that they can be given all the knowledge and understanding they need to make major decisions wisely. Above all, we pray to be, for our country to be governed by men and women of integrity, to love justice and to seek the good of all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Our mission focus this morning is the work of the Church Mission Society. Its aim is to be a community set free to follow God's call. It is made up of thousands of people from all walks of life, praying, learning and acting together in pursuit of that call. CMS believes every Christian is called to join in God's mission and has the potential to bring challenge, change, hope and freedom in the world. We thank you that the UK staff were at last able to meet together in person this July to recognise what God has been doing and to pray into the future. We pray specifically from their prayer letter this week as we praise God for Stephen Hatch's impact on teachers in Tanzania as well as students at St John's Seminary in Kilimantide where he works as a maths teacher and head of science department in the secondary school. Staff members have tended to focus on each new class doing better than the last, but this year they started using an entirely different approach, looking at pupils' individual progress and seeing the results of their effort invested in specific young people. We pray for more positive steps like this, which benefit teachers and students alike. We pray for CMS mission partners in the Congo, Patricia and Peter Wyard, who are based in Aru Diocese, where Patricia, a palliative care doctor, teaches and supports local medical staff. Peter teaches students preparing for ministry and offers training, and has recently been building a team and developing the Rooted in Jesus discipleship course for the local context. We pray for people to catch the vision for this course and for it to be properly embedded over the, last few, after the next few months. Father, there are many missionaries like these working all over the world. Give to each of them safety in their work and enable them to have a positive effect on the individuals and communities that they serve. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all for whom life is difficult at the moment, for those who are ill at home or in hospitals or nursing homes for those who are struggling with difficult relationships, pressure of work or not having enough work, and those who fear the future. We pray for those who are bereaved, especially the family and friends of Rosemary Thomas and Kenneth Shenton, whose funerals were held here this week. Lord, you know what our burdens are this morning and the burdens we carry for others. 
we bring them to you by name now. And we leave all those burdens at the foot of your cross, trusting in your love, mercy and healing power. Lord, in your mercy, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We join together in the words of the Lord's Prayer, which should be coming up. Our Father in heaven, hallowed by your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Please stand for the peace. God makes peace within us, let's claim it. God makes peace between us, let's share it. Let's offer each other a sign of peace without shaking hands, without wandering around, but just waving or helping or whatever is comfortable for you. We sing, Here is Love. Open deep and 
So we come to our communion prayer. The Lord is with us. The Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Almighty God, good Father to us all, your face is turned turn towards your world. In the love, in your love, you gave us Jesus, your Son to rescue us from sin and death. Your word goes out to call us home, to the city where angels sing your praise. We join with them in heaven's song. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Father of all, we give you thanks for every gift that comes from heaven. To the darkness, Jesus came as your light. With signs of faith and words of hope, he touched untouchables with love and washed the guilty clean. This is his story. This is our song. Hosanna in the highest. The crowds came out to see your son. Yet at the end, they turned on him. On the night he was betrayed, he came to table with his friends to celebrate the freedom of your people. This is his story. This is our song. Hosanna in the highest. Jesus blessed you, Father, for the food. He took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and said, This is my body, given for you all. Jesus then gave thanks for the wine. He took the cup, gave it and said, this is my blood, shed for you all, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. This is our story. This is our song. Hosanna in the highest. Therefore, Father, with this bread and this cup, we celebrate the cross on which he died to set us free. Defying death, he rose again and is alive with you to plead for us and for all the world. This is our story. Send your spirit on us now, that by these gifts we may feed on Christ and opened eyes and hearts on fire. May we and all who share this food offer ourselves to live for you and be welcomed to your feast in heaven where all creation worships you, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Holy, be yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us share this meal to celebrate God's faithfulness and to remember we are all welcome at his table. If you wish to receive communion, please would you remain standing and we will come to you. There is gluten-free wafers if you'd like. Okay, if you've upstairs then.
darkness seems to hide his face, I rest on his unchanging grace, in every high and stormy grave, my anchor holds within the my mind to Calvary where Jesus bled and died for me I see his wounds his hands his feet my Savior
robes of white, the blazing sun shall pierce the night, and I will rise among the saints, my gaze transfixed on Jesus' face. Oh, darkness at all, as we've been fed and forgiven at his table, let us go and walk in the light together. Amen. And as we come to our last hymn, I'd encourage those who've got children down the parish centre during this hymn to go and collect them, and we can then go after the final blessing down to the parish centre for coffee and tea. So we're going to sing, O Breath of Life. forth our offering. Father, we thank you for all the gifts that you give us. And Father, we offer you bless these gifts, the various tokens of our, our giving. You'll bless them, Lord, in your service. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. God, who from the death of sin has... Sorry. God, from, who from the death of sin raised you to a new life in Christ, keep you from falling and set you in the presence of his glory and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, with each one of you, now and always. Amen. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. And I'll remind you to just go out giving each other space. <laughs>